Hello everyone and welcome to a new discussion uh, which we are going to have on uh, common derivatives of digital elevation models and this is in two parts. And uh, so in first part we are going to have discussion on related with slope and in second part in aspect and uh, we will also see some other details uh, here. As you know that uh, uh, basically uh, this is all for the uh, you know uh, understanding the terrain and uh, the best representation of terrain or the best data for terrain which we are having is a digital elevation model. But uh, simple uh, using digital elevation model will not give you uh, those characteristics or derivatives. So, we have to process that data and the purpose here is to understand the topography. So, now question is what is basically topography. So, basically uh, topography the surface characteristics such as slope which we are going to discuss aspect, relief and form of an area referred to as topography. So, all these things which are part of uh, uh, topography slope and the most common derivatives of a digital elevation model are always slope and aspect. If you recall discussion related with TIN and that is triangulated irregular network, we discussed that uh, when TIN is generated at the same time slope and aspect maps are also generated along with that. So, that is in some way uh, TIN is advantageous, but in case of a raster grid which is a digital elevation model in our discussion, then these have to be derived separately. Now, as you know that the topography of a surface basically is represented through our digital elevation model. And uh, as we are going uh, for higher and higher spatial resolution digital elevation models, uh, we are, uh, we can see, we can study uh, the more, uh, the topography in more detailed form and uh, you know we can get uh, even uh, information which otherwise was impossible using uh, survey topo uh, topographic maps or survey topo sheets. And because uh, there you are the terrain is only represented through contours and uh, visualizing uh, you know seeing uh, contour and visualizing topography uh, was very very difficult and uh, all these uh, slope and aspect was not that easy. As you know that uh, DM represents a topographic surface in terms of the elevation values measured at a finite number of points and uh, that geomorphic features or uh, uh, terrain features, terrain characteristics which are important from geomorphological analysis uh, such as valleys, ridges, peat, pits, etc. are very, very uh, important derivatives of a digital elevation model. Now, uh, if we talk about the uh, geomorphological importance, then uh, nowadays it is also possible uh, depending on the scale, if we choose appropriate scale for a, of, of, for a terrain, then employing digital elevation model, we can also classify that terrain uh, from geomorphological point of view as well. That means whether uh, it is a peak, ridge, valleys, pits, etc. So, this kind of analysis is also possible. In later discussions, we will bring uh, that analysis also uh, that as one of the derivatives that ultimately what we get the geomorphological importance for like uh, geomorphology is very, very important for civil engineers too. And uh, they, there, there can be a completely separate course uh, for uh, importance of geomorphology for civil engineers especially. Uh, because uh, uh, if somebody you know uh, about to construct or uh, finding a site suitable site for a bridge construction on a river and uh, then they must understand the fluvial geomorphology how that river is behaving in that part of the uh, land and uh, therefore um, uh, if a, if the same uh, requirement is for a hilly terrain like himalaya then the you know this uh, valleys, ridges and where the bends are there in the river and not meanders, meanders will be seen only in plain area. So, these bends of river uh, these are also important from 
siting a very suitable location for a bridge. So many times say if uh, this exercise has not been done that means the geomorphology of the area has not been studied properly then these projects might fail. So whether it is a, a construction of a hydropower site or a reservoir or a bridge any such thing whether it is in hilly terrain or flat areas or plain areas geomorphology should be studied first and what is the best tool available today for us to understand the geomorphology is doing analysis extensive analysis uh, using digital elevation model. This I have been also uh, telling that uh, uh, DM and satellite images are a storehouse of information. As much information as you can drive and uh, these can provide you. The only thing which uh, the only requirement is that we have to understand first uh, uh, these two different data sets though uh, both are raster. But uh, also we should know what are my requirements in a project or in a study or research and accordingly I can exploit uh, these two big data sets uh, uh, on a GIS platform maybe in an integrated manner to bring lot of insight of the terrain which is otherwise is impossible not even sometimes uh, uh, through field investigations. So this is uh, uh, very important as also you know that uh, DMs and uh, DMs are commonly organized in uh, you know in a grid format and because of they represent they are represented or terrain is represented through a two dimensional matrix. And therefore, the computer manipulations or processing on computer becomes much easier. So that is why uh, these have become very, very popular uh, data sets. And uh, that is another reason because lot of people are looking for digital elevation models. So the organizations and countries are producing digital elevation models on regular basis on higher and higher for higher and higher spatial resolutions. So uh, this is uh, this is uh, very very important. This is a uh, one more point which is a kind of repeat which we have already discussed that in a in a grid or in a raster the cell size or pixel size is fixed and uh, you cannot change that means within a file uh, every cell will represent the same ground area whereas in case of uh, tin it is adaptable to relief roughness. So uh, uh, DMs or grid uh, or satellite images do not allow that uh, adaptation of relief roughness but only tin model allows us to do that thing. Though by employing higher spatial resolution data or a small cell size uh, data that means uh, representing a small uh, ground area or field area uh, we can definitely go in much more detail. Uh, but if we go for higher and higher spatial resolution though our requirements may not be uh, for that kind of resolution or the scale then uh, it will be unnecessary redundant and it will uh, require large storage uh, space on your uh, storage devices and uh, uh, unnecessary it may create some problem in future because remember we have also discussed while discussing uh, evaluating different digital elevation models and which one is the best. At that time we discussed that it is not always true that higher spatial resolution means more accurate uh, representation of the terrain may, may not be always true. So one has to be also aware before we choose a much higher spatial resolution digital elevation model. Only one should go if it is required in our projects or in our studies. Tin we have already discussed so uh, as you know that it is all triangulated irregular network uh, in a one file or one uh, tin uh, all triangles may be of different sizes and shapes but they represent a triangular uh, facets of the terrain and that is the advantage because it is adaptable to relief roughness. And uh, this uh, information about the rough relief or relief roughness uh, is only uh, possible uh, through this uh, tin and as you know that uh, uh, if uh, input num it, it basically the sizes of triangles uh, will depend on how what is the density of my observations. 
if a density of observations is very high and each of those observation points or data or spot heights are representing different elevation values like in case of a hilly terrain then uh, and these are these will adopt or these will create a smaller and smaller triangles and they reverse in case of plain areas so uh, uh, what we do in uh, in order to drive these uh, slope and aspects the most common uh, derivatives and uh, there are different variations are also there or variants are also there and uh, so uh, these uh, uh, we do it uh, through a function which is called topographic function and uh, which calculate the uh, that uh, uh, for uh, topography suppose if i am going to calculate for slope then what it will do is a neighborhood function basically so it would it would look in the surrounding and uh, wherever a uh, uh, against the center cell value if value anywhere in the you know in the surrounding is less then it will uh, note that one and that becomes the direction of the slope as well so and also depending on the variation how much variation with the central cell in terms of values that will also decide the slope angle that means the value of the slope so the most common topographic uh, functions or transformations uh, which we work with digital elevation models as i have said one is the slope which simply we can define is the rate of change of elevation so uh, if two cells uh, they are having a, a large elevation difference then that means uh, there the slope is very high how much it is uh, there that that can also be decided easily uh, through these transformation functions there is another term which is used is called gradient now this is basically the maximum slope is called gradient so you may have a, a sloping surface but all parts may not have the maximum you know so uh, for identifying that which part is having the maximum slope that we call as gradient which is also possible and which we put also as one of the uh, common derivatives of digital elevation model and third uh, common derivative is, is the aspect which, which is uh, basically is the direction of a slope with reference to north so if uh, if uh, i am i am having for example A, a sloping surface so this will decide with the horizontal plane this will decide what is the uh, slope angle and uh, with this uh, but uh, what is the orientation of this uh, sloping surface uh, with reference to the north will be decided in this uh, analysis which is aspect so this is the direction of the of a sloping surface with reference to the north is and uh, those who are uh, geologist uh, having geological or earth sciences background they can understand much easier slope is something like dip amount and uh, aspect is the you know strike direction basically quite uh, so slope is measured in the vertical plane whereas aspect is measured in horizontal plane because it is where you are bringing the direction that means it has to be related with the north generally we take north as a reference and uh, do it in, as per our compass now in order to calculate uh, this uh, slope or any these uh, uh, very, uh, common de derivatives uh, which describe the topography at a specific location we what we resort as earlier also mentioned is the neighborhood so what is in the neighborhood that relatively that will be decided so if neighborhood suppose uh, in a 3 by 3 matrix of cells Uh, all uh, all uh, cells are having the same value that means the area is flat but say in the southeast direction the in the corner one uh, one cell is having lower value compared to the center cell then we can say the slope is uh, towards southeast direction so with reference to north or that becomes our aspect now what is the value of the slope how, in in terms of either degree or percentage that can be decided based on the difference between the central cell value and the say in this example southeast central and uh, southeast cell value so in order to estimate uh, this uh, these uh, topographic functions or derivatives generally a 3 by 3 window a roving or moving window is used and uh, uh, 
as a on the center cell what we are deciding the value for the center cell on the point is usually used. So, if I am having a 3 by uh, 3 window and uh, then uh, that uh, window will move throughout uh, all all uh, digital elevation file or two dimensional matrix and uh, whatever the value here for the center cell is decided by looking the neighborhood cells. So, this is how. Now, these uh, 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 these cells of my uh, this window and uh, 3 by 3 moving or roving window uh, can also have their own weightages and uh, that uh, can help us uh, to find uh, certain things in much easier way. It is a uh, very close to a uh, special filtering in terms of digital image processing. So, there are two kinds of filtering one is based uh, which is a special filtering another one based on the frequency and uh, that is fast Fourier transformation other things. So, uh, here we are going for special filtering uh, which can be applied on, on any two dimensional matrix. Now, as we have been uh, discussing that uh, the most common derivatives of uh, these topographic functions are slope and aspect calculation. Now, let us take uh, first uh, slope calculation. A as you can see, it is a based on simple trigonometry that rise upon run equal to 10 theta and this is what the 10 uh, theta is here. So, uh, uh, if, uh, if this rise is much more compared to what uh, the uh, you know run, then you would have a larger 10 value or if it is a uh, smaller, then you may have smaller. So, relatively like here and uh, this one is having uh, very less value and degree of slope is being determined is uh, 30. Here it is a uh, run and length uh, is the same. So, 10 theta or 10 45 uh, he, here uh, is like this 40, um, 45 degree and uh, this 10 theta here and uh, in this case when run, uh, run is less and rise is very high then we may have a much higher uh, degree of slope. Now, the same, the, the same slopes can also be represented in form of percentage when we scale instead of 0 to 60, if we rescale from 0 to 100, then we can also represent in terms of percentages. By default in most of the GIS softwares, you would find that they will drive your slope in terms of degree because uh, we are much uh, better, our brain is much better trained to understand the degree rather than percentage, but the option is definitely available in most of the GI. It is a simple uh, calculation that instead of uh, having 0 to 60, uh, you can uh, or sorry uh, 0 to 90, you can have uh, you know percentage uh, from 0 to 100 in that case. So, in that way it can be uh, decided. Now, these values will uh, be accordingly uh, change how how these have been implemented in the software one has to really check. The best one uh, which I prefer always is keep in degree which people understand very easily without any uh, problem. Like uh, here on the left image as you can see that run is 100 meter, the rise is 20 meter. So, and uh, when we, uh, we substitute these values 20 and uh, uh, 100 in this equation you get a 20 percent uh, slope in that sense. Now, this is the uh, one example of uh, how, how the calculation is done and uh, using these roving windows or uh, moving windows of 3 by uh, 3 size. Uh, so, over the matrix a small window will move throughout and uh, will try to see what is uh, in, in the data and accordingly it will calculate. So, if, if for example, here uh, this is the input raster which you are seeing and the, in order to understand the values have been kept in a very simple uh, range that is between only 1 to 3 and uh, this is the output raster basically and, uh, and that uh, the what is the value calculation here. Uh, the only problem uh, comes when I have to uh, calculate for the uh, you know the boundary area. So, if uh, if my my data is uh, 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 like here 
uh, that I am having a something like this uh, uh, raster, then one row, one column on left side, one row right side, one column uh, top and bottom for which the calculations cannot be done. Here the calculations cannot be done because when I will keep my uh, this moving roving 3 by 3 metric window, then for because these areas I will not have any data available and therefore a one you know uh, one cell thick uh, uh, boundary uh, would be there though in this example that is not shown but when you would do the real analysis you can zoom it on the margins of your data set and you can definitely observe that point. Now here uh, if I if I take for this central pixel like uh, this 3 how the calculation has been done. So, if you see here uh, compared to the value 3 uh, the these are the uh, these are the things which are having in the surrounding are having lower value. So, this is having what uh, uh, 36 but the other cells are having less values. But uh, one may argue that why this value is higher because uh, this is part of an output. So, in the surrounding of this one that means mainly on the northern side the values might be much lower and therefore this cell is getting higher slope value. So, for each cell and uh, that roving or moving window moves throughout your data set throughout your matrix and keep calculating uh, a slope values for the center cell and this is how it is determined. So, the use of uh, another very important uh, part is which I was about very keen to discuss here and it is very very important is called jet factor. Now, as you know that a digital elevation model when I was discussing introduced digital elevation model and uh, at that time I said that there are two resolutions associated with the any digital elevation model. One is for horizontal uh, and one is for vertical because uh, generally uh, the data set might be represented for horizontal it might be represented through degree decimals. But uh, the height or the cell which are representing the height above mean sea level uh, will be having value in meters. So, that means the x y scale or horizontal scale is completely different than vertical scale. So, when we go for this uh, slope aspect or many other uh, such analysis we find that uh, uh, there, there will be a, always a question about jet factor. What should be the jet factor? Jet factor basically will allow you to rescale uh, one of the scales, and uh, either you rescale the horizontal scale or vertical scale. So the use of jet factor is essential for correct slope calculations. Not only slope, but many other calculations. When the surface jet units are expressed in unit from the ground of x y unit. That means, the horizontal scale horizontal scale is not equal to vertical scale in case of a digital elevation model. Only it, if it possible when I am having a UTM projection easting northing and everything is represented in meters for horizontal also. So, my vertical scale that is z values and x y values all are in meters then I can choose z factor as one in my software. Otherwise, I have to provide a value. So, the uh, you know basically uh, this is uh, we have to control and take care about this. Now, when we bring this data set or our digital elevation model uh, which is uh, required for calculation of a, a slope then the range of values in the output will depend on the type of measurement units. That means that the roving matrix whether it is also having some weightage or not or every cell is having value 1. So, the biasedness or weight, uh, weight can also be assigned to that. So, for degree the range of the slope values will depend of course, 0 to 90 degree or in case of percentage uh, 0 to uh, 45 uh, 0, 0 to 100 in case of percentage and uh, sometimes we may get value 0 like here in this example this value uh, this cell is bearing value 
zero and then zero has been or it's a no data basically. Or if it is flat terrain, then value would be zero and no, of course, it is really flat, so and no slope at all, zero degree slope. So this center cell for this uh, three by three matrix uh, will go through the entire data set. If it finds uh, no data, it will result in no data. But if it finds a, a flat terrain, that means all cells below that three by three matrix are having same value, then the center cell will be assigned zero value, not no data. So, no data will always result no data like in this example, this is no data result will all no data. Whereas, the all surround uh, you know 3 by 3 cells all 9 cells if they are having value same value then 0 will be assigned. That means, it is declaring a say flat terrain in compared to the neighborhood. Now, there will be a question why only 3 by 3 roving moving window this uh, moving matrix, why not 5 by 5, why not 7 by 7? Yes, it can be done, but uh, uh, it will bring uh, you know more computation time and may not bring very good uh, results either because it will smoothen the things which you do not want. So, this is the best uh, option available and most of, the, most of these softwares have implemented only for 3 by 3. But uh, I am sure that some software might allow you to design your own matrix and changing the dimension instead of 3 by 3, you can go any odd number. So, neighborhood cells uh, will decide what should be the value. Here it is, uh, uh, let us take another example, but now I am introducing you know two different types of slopes. One is the planar slope and uh, in case of planar slope, the this rate of change or delta of the surface is in horizontal that is dx, dz and oblique dx and the vertical dz by dy directions from the center cell determine the slope. And the basic uh, the function or algorithm is used to calculate the slope is something like this. That the slope in degrees is a 10 and uh, this is under is square then this is square overall under root multiply by this you know but truncated version which is 180y divided by pi. So, this value has to uh, be uh, 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 multiplied with that and then you get slope in degree. Now, the uh, this uh, slope algorithm or this concept can also be interpreted as follows that the slope degree a 10 that is rise upon run multiply by the this uh, 180 by pi or this 57.29578 and where you know that rise run is this function. So, by this you get the planar slope calculation. Further, if we see that the rate of change in x direction for the center cell that is the E is calculated like this. And then rate of change in the y direction is calculated like this. So, for each direction, because say horizontal and there are two directions x and y, therefore, uh, such calculations will be required, and then finally, you get a slope. So, in this example, uh, like here, uh, the, this, uh, this is my roving or moving window, uh, which is on run on this one. This is my input raster, and uh, when this is what the result I get that these are uh, slope output which I am getting in terms of uh, degree. So, likewise I can do this calculation. What are the important things to remember is of course, z factor and uh, this uh, because if z units are not same as uh, or rather vertical units are not same as horizontal units, one must take care about z uh, factor. When we go for percentage slopes basically we are multiplying with uh, 100 and if rise is a different unit than run, then we should uh, take care about z factor otherwise it will bring wrong completely wrong results. And so, while doing this uh, demonstration on computer of uh, slope calculation, I will show you that uh, what the difference it, it will bring if you do not take care about uh, the z factor. So, that means the elevation and horizontal units must be same type in meters 
and if they are not then jet factors uh, so cannot be burned uh, you know generally by default most of the softwares would keep jet factor as one assuming that horizontal and vertical scale are same but if uh, if they don't know whether my data is in uh, you know the digital elevation model horizontal is in degree decimal whereas my units or uh, for vertical are in meters so the change is required uh, for uh, um, average jet factor for india uh, which we have calculated is point uh, point 0.5 times uh, 089 so how this figure has come basically you are converting uh, the you know through this jet factor your uh, um, uh, meters into dd so when both are uh, then the correct calculations of slope would be there or correct estimation so jet factor is only applicable in case of planar method uh, this is one example typical example this is the input uh, your digital elevation model when it is subjected to you know for the slope calculation and uh, this is what uh, output you get in degree now uh, how you classify this one is a different thing i may classify only in five categories and have range so the classification methods of continuous data we have already discussed so that you can apply instead by, because by default it is always uh, equal uh, distance classification uh, will be done that each class will represent almost the equal uh, variations in the slope but uh, if i want to change to equal area or quant uh, quantile or standard deviation i can choose accordingly uh, this is uh, 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 there are now different vari variations which can be done or which can uh, calculations can be done on agis platform using other some other methods rather than what the standard method so there is a one horn method and uh, that uh, uh, slopes can Uh, also be calculated in percentage like here it is in though in degree now what in horn method is that uh, this is my uh, these are my uh, uh, you know these 3 by 3 cells and uh, they have been given here in this example z1 z2 z3 like this so given 3 by 3 cell neighborhood with elevation z1 to z9 z1 to z9 with the cells separated by distance l now here when because in both directions it has to be calculated so d z over d x that is a north south gradient will be calculated when i do d z by d y then east west gradient is calculated so in horn method uh, this is what it is followed it, he gave this idea in 1981 and uh, this is how uh, the calculation will be done once these values are substituted you get uh, the example also now four cell instead of three cell method four cell method uh, was also given and that is basically jevan burger and thorne method in 1987 so you may find lot of variations because once uh, somebody has developed initially a 3 by 3 matrix to calculate the slope people is will definitely think why 3 by 3 why not 4 by why not 5 by so that may bring a new developments in this but the basic concept will remain same these uh, variants will bring little different results not major differences uh, and that that is always true that after each and every calculation one must go and check uh, for errors so you have to have some idea about the terrain before you calculate for slopes if you are already having idea of the terrain and a value is uh, coming accordingly you may get a satisfaction or you may say it is now calculating correctly so one has to be really careful about the jet factor and other things now these uh, uh, you know the nearest point weighted more than the diagonal neighbors if i choose this horn method this also known as the sobel operator in terms of your uh, you know special uh, filtering in digital image processing there we call as a, a sobel filter here it is a sobel operator which can be used for edge detection uh, 
So, there in digital image processing of remote sensing data, we use this uh, spatial filter which is a Sobel filter for edge detection. So, wherever we are having the sharp changes in the cell values, those are highlighted through this filtering technique. Because uh, in this horn, the center cell actually has no influence on the calculated slope, maybe it is advantage. So, depending basically, depending what you are going to uh, calculate here. So, this is how in one direction it is in the east west gradient direction. Now, default slope calculation method in ArcGIS is Horn's method. This has been implemented, uh, not uh, the other one Jabberger or uh, Thorn method, but Horn method that has been implemented uh, in default. But if you want uh, to calculate by employing other methods, uh, those options you can also explore. And for example, there is another one which was given by Fleming and Hofer in 1979, uh, which is the next best, best method or algorithm after this horn method is uh, that it takes uh, uh, Zx, Z, uh, Zx and uh, sorry, uh, Dz and Dx and Dz and Dy using cardinal direction. Now, these cardinal direction I will just discuss in a minute and the center cell not taken into account for the calculation completely you know now about the cardinal direction. So, these directions with reference to north like uh, north, south and uh, northeast, southwest and uh, when these are there basically the north, south, east, west we say cardinal direction when uh, northeast, northwest, south, west and southeast are there then we say ordinal direction. In case of aspect all cardinal and uh, ordinal directions are used. Uh, but in case of uh, our slope calculations, only cardinal directions are uh, you know in this particular method are used. So, that it uh, takes that using cardinal directions only east west or north south. This is what you have been seeing, no diagonal uh, calculations are possible at that stage, but later on that is also considered. Now, diagonal uh, returns or diagonal methods are also there, which is the basically modifications of Fleming and Hofer methods, which takes a dz over dx and dz over dy using ordinal direction. And therefore, that is why the name is diagonal. And the center cell not taken again into account for calculation like here. And the, uh, this is how the result will come about uh, when you imply this diagonal return. Various variants are available. The simple method is basically the, by the concept as uh, which uses the difference in elevation with its neighbor to calculate the slope. So, whichever the cell against the center cell is having low value that becomes basically uh, the slope, the amount, the, the difference will decide the amount or in terms of degree we can calculate. and in the di it will also decide the direction both in cardinal and ordinal direction. So, eight directions uh, would be possible only uh, that is basically decided for aspect. So, only method where center cell is actually taken into account is through this simple method. Ranks which are relatively low for slope calculations because it depends on how people prefer, uh, but uh, this is what uh, is the most popular one and uh, though it may rank uh, among uh, calculations from very accuracy point of view uh, may be low. And this is how again this kernel also these uh, roving or moving windows are also called kernel. So, you can uh, do the calculation like this. Now, I have already shown uh, the same digital elevation model was subjected to uh, horn method. Now, this is the Jaber Bergen and Thorne method. I will also show you the comparison uh, when the same digital elevation model was subjected to two uh, completely different methods. This is how, how you get the results also. So, uh, in uh, for one particular cell against cell, so the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 against 5 individual cells when the comparison was made 
here we are getting 1.2 degree here we are getting 3.3 degree so it is more than double again here here 8.6 degree it is giving 5 degree so as you go uh, towards higher degree uh, you may get a different uh, thing now here it uh, is almost same 29 degree it is giving the lower value 49 degree it is quite close to that one so that means uh, especially it is varying when we compare two uh, uh, slope uh, based on two different methods horn and java governor and thorn method now which one is correct again it has to be decided the same way as we decide which interpolation method is correct you select certain points if it is possible go in the field check it and then choose the appropriate one so uh, by this uh, way you can get otherwise the simple method or horn method which has been implemented is uh, quite good except in certain cases you may get a lot of variations between two methods but visually of course you may not realize that uh, they are having uh, different values but when you go and probe these uh, derivative or these products slope products uh, which have been generated using different methods on individual cell basis this is what the result you get that the the slope values may vary very largely especially at the lower end of the slope so with this i end this uh, discussion thank you very much